Maybe there's no reason for me to have hurt your father. Oh, yes, but if Bob had found out what you are, a criminal running from the law, you know, he may have even mentioned it to me. You would have called the sheriff. Now, don't be silly. Why would I do a thing like that? I could have done that the first night. You just don't understand. I like you. I like you very much. A QM production. Starring David Jansen as Dr. Richard Kimball, an innocent victim of blind justice, falsely convicted for the murder of his wife, reprieved by fate when a train wreck freed him en route to the death house, freed him to hide in lonely desperation, to change his identity, to toil at many jobs, freed him to search for a one-armed man he saw leave the scene of the crime, freed him to run before the relentless pursuit of the police lieutenant obsessed with his capture. The guest star in tonight's story, Tuesday Wells. Tonight's episode, Dark Corner. You travel at night if you're on the run. The dark is a shield against curious eyes, against questions, against talk, haunted by what lies behind. As always, fearful of what lies ahead. Evening, Buck. Won't take long. How about some light? Everybody out. Bring your bags. Toward Sam Braden's place. Turn on the plug. 
It's the middle of the night. For Dairyman. Good evening, Claire. Good evening, Mr. Grover. Something the matter. Oh, I've been chasing this fellow. Uh, what's going on? I was just trying to tell your fiance. Trying to take this fellow off the bus from Sioux Falls, and he ran. Seemed to be heading straight in this direction. You folks heard anything? Not a thing. Well, maybe Maddie heard. Where is she? Well, I expect she's down in the studio. In the middle of the night? Why not? She doesn't have to do the milk. Maddie. Maddie, are you there? Let's have a light. The sheriff wants to ask you something. Even Maddie, I followed this fellow over here. Thought you might have seen him. Heard him. No, nothing. I'm sorry. I'm not. It's worth the trip out here just to see you. <laughs> you checked the bond, sheriff. Thank you, Dave. When did I lie? You said you didn't see me. I didn't. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm used to it. Stay here. I'll be back. Disappeared. Bob. Yeah. Oh. Mr. Grover? Mr. Grover, did, did you catch him? Honey, tonight I couldn't even catch cold. Uh, Marty, will you check the other side of the barn? Frank? Thought you'd like to know. We got him. Got who? The fellow you wanted. He just stepped off the bus and gave himself up. This hoodlum stuck up a liquor store in Sioux Falls. Police got a tip he was on the bus. They called me and asked me to take him off. Then why'd you chase the other one? He ran. But why? That's somebody else's headache, honey. Does that mean you'll stop looking for him? I got the man they asked me to get. Why waste the taxpayers' money, huh? Hey, Charlie with the prisoner? Yep, he's in the other car. Still got lots of night, Sam. Just past 11. Papa? Daddy? Uh, I'm going back to the studio for a minute. I won't be long. You're not going to do any more work tonight. Oh, no, no. I just, I just want to turn out the lamp. I wouldn't worry you. Good night. Good night.
They've gone back to the house. Trust me, please. I'm... I'm Maddie Braden. Jim Russell. Jim. Why did you help me? Oh, you, you were so frightened, and you've hurt your foot. I... Well, you knew I was hurt? Yes. You can tell a lot in the dark. Just by the way someone walks. The sheriff say why he wanted me? No. What will you do? I move on, eh? You know, you... You... You could... Stay here. Uh, no, no, thank you. I can't do that. But, but you're hurt. You couldn't go anywhere. Well, that won't matter if the sheriff stopped looking for me. But he has stopped looking for me, hasn't he? The sheriff is a very stubborn man. I'm afraid he'll keep looking. The only place he won't look is here. Well, I know. I'll be down first thing in the morning. Just don't make any noise and turn out the light. I'm very glad you're here. Good, good night. what they call door to door. Oh, thank you so much. Well, this clay is pretty heavy. I could carry it in for you. Oh, no, no. I wouldn't dream of holding you up. I'll get Pop or a Bob. Thank you anyway. It's a pleasure. Pretty scenery within 200 miles. Bye. Bye. Just convince your father. That clay's not too heavy, is it? No, it's fine. Your ankle's so hard. No, it's fine. I'm kidding. Jim, is it wrong for me to make up that story for Papa? Is it wrong to try and help someone? You're nice. I don't think it's a carburetor. I'll bet it's the distributor. How can you fix it? No, it's out of my league, son. Yeah, it's the distributor. Look, it's all worn down there. Well, then we gotta get somebody that can fix it. Well, what about Jerry in Sioux Falls? Papa? Oh, Papa? Buddy. Uh, this is Mr. Russell. <laughs> he, uh, came with the clay. You mean he came all the way from Sioux Falls just to bring that clay? Oh, no, no. He's going to sit for me. Well, you, you see, I asked Mr. Albers to find somebody, and he said he had this friend who was sick. And, but that'd mean he'd have to come 40 miles each day. Oh, now, Maddie, just for a few hours' work, then... Well, I, I was hoping he'd stay. He could work for you, too. For me? Papa, we can't afford it. I'll show you the bills. She's right, honey. Not with milk prices so low. Please don't make me beg. My hands are all I have to work with. Oh, Maddie. You can get lost in the dark. 
I couldn't pay you much. I wouldn't want much. Uh, meals, fresh air until I get on my feet. You know anything about farm machinery? A little. All right, $30 a week and keep. Back room of the studio has got a basin and cotton. Bob, get him some coveralls. Oh, you're so good, Papa. Now, Mr. Russell, if you'll take the play. All right. We're gonna make it. Sure, Papa. We always do. When it's for her. <laughs> you know, it would have taken me a solid week to take that thing apart and put it back together again. Then we would have had to call a mechanic. Why does Sam keep you around? No, he's one in a million. Now, he took me in right after my folks got killed in an automobile crash. And he said till just after the funeral. That was 22 years ago. Some men like to pick their son-in-law's Zilly. Oh, Sam didn't pick me. Clara did. And she looked up at me one day and she said, uh, oh, let's get married. I think she was about seven. And she wasn't kidding. We're getting hitched in July. Mary. Oh, do you think we'll be able to work today? I think so. Almost finished it. Oh, good. I'm so glad. Sam said that uh, he's glad Maddie found you. He's hoping you're going to stay on for a little while. Well, I haven't had any other offers this morning. I'll go tell him you got it fixed. Oh, all right. Huh? I just talked to Mr. Albert. He's the... Never heard of a Jim Russell. Ask me to leave. No, just the opposite. I want you to stay. My sister Maddie wants you here that much. I got the feeling you didn't like doing things for Maddie. Oh, this is not for Maddie. This is for me. Talk too much. Well, I've been admiring your work. Thank you. Can I smoke? What? Can I smoke? Oh, yes, of course. It looks like elephants. I remember elephants. Papa used to take us to the circus every year. And he never had to worry about us getting separated. He could always find me watching the elephants. I was, uh, eight the last time. Just before I fell. You fell? It, there's a ledge out past the barn. I'd rather not talk about that. Of course. Why does your sister want me in? Does she? That's what she said. Hmm. I should have known. Any time I've ever wanted anything or like somebody. I like you, Mr. Russell. Very much. You hardly know me. I know that you're running, and you're scared, and you have to depend on me.
Maddie, I'm sorry to break this up. Oh, we were just finishing anyway. <laughs> Tractor's running fine, real fine. Good. Uh, will you take a look at the station wagon? Sure, what's the trouble? Well, there's something wrong with the gear shift. It uh, keeps slipping out of park. Dad's been doing that for about three weeks now. All right, I'll take a look at it. Uh, help Maddie with the claim. Oh, that's all right. Bob can help me. Maddie, the herd has to be fed. Oh, you can spare him for a few minutes, Papa. Well, no more than that. Come on, Jim. just said that we would stay away from each other, that's all. If you walk out that door off screen, now you wouldn't want to explain that, would you? Have you seen Bob? I need him to help me with the thing. Uh, can I help? What's the matter? Nothing's the matter, Clara. He's with Maddie, isn't he? Clara! No! Clara! Clara, no! No, let her go! Clara, wait! Let her go! She has to find out! Listen to me now. Let me explain to you. Let me go. and get some blankets. Sorry to hear about it, Sam. Something I can do? Oh, no thanks, Frank. She twisted her back some, but no fractures, and Doc says she can come home tomorrow. I always told her to stay away from that ledge. I was, I was always afraid she'd fall. Can I go in and talk to her? Well, she's sleeping. Maybe you better go on in. One of us ought to be around anyway. You leaving? Well, I'm going into Sioux Falls, pick up a hospital bed. She'll need one for a week or so. And then I, uh, I want to stop in and see Maddie. Hired man's the only one with her. Frank, thanks for stopping. I appreciate it. Marty. I'll see you later, Sam. Oh, Bob. Did Sam get himself a new hired man? 
of Maddie got him. That's a real funny thing, all right. One minute a man disappears in Sam's place, and the next, Sam's got himself a new hired man. What's wrong with that? What, with no prices being what they are, Sam's had a scrape the last four or five years. That new hired man must be working real cheap. You know if you saw him again? I'd know him. Any place, any time. and they wouldn't tell me anything. Well, they never do. But it's so hard to wait like this and not know. If anything ever happened to Claire, I don't know what I'd do. You know, the, the doctors used to tell me that if I was ever unhappy or lost or frightened or upset about anything to work, Please, please sit for me this afternoon. Just a while. I can't work without you. I don't think I'll have the time, Annie. But, but we could get so much accomplished. I mean, with everyone away, no interruptions. With Clara in the hospital, your father's going to need the wife. Yes. Yes, of course. What are you doing, Maddie? That's not a toy. Mr. Russell, I am not a child or a cripple to be pushed into some dark little corner. Just out of everyone's way. Park, reverse, neutral, dry, and low. There. Who taught you that? Bob. Oh, I drive into town with him sometimes. That's the only way I can feel I'm alive, is to know things and touch them and reach out and feel I'm part of the world. You know what it's like to be alone. Please understand. I understand. Then, then we can work later. I have to finish with this, uh, wagon, Maddie. Oh. Please be flattering and hurry just a little. Oh, your pa at the hospital. How is Clara? Now relax. I, I can't get anything on the phone. She's fine. Just twisted her back a little, that's all. Oh. I thought you coming out here meant... I was just driving by. Thought I'd look in. <sighs> your pa said you were here all alone. Just a hard hand, huh? Yeah, he, he has the wagon out on the road. Seems to be something wrong with the gear shift. Understand he's doing double time for you and Sam both. That him? They say I've caught him pretty well. Do you like it? Wouldn't 
say he'd win any beauty prize. <laughs> no, I, I despise pretty men. That gives me a chance. Well, if you weren't married, I'd grab you. <laughs> well, I might let you, but I've got to hurry on over to High Meadows. Well, I got drunk and kicked his wife around. Didn't have any dog. Oh. <laughs> you better stay close to home. There's nobody here. Uh, thanks for stopping by. <laughs> bad as we thought. Is Maddie in the studio? I guess so. You come along. Jim? It's me. I want to ask you some questions. Papa, I've been so upset. I want to ask you some questions. I want you to give me some answers. How did... How did Clara happen to fall off the ledge? I don't know, Papa. Jim, Clara was talking to you. Did she ask about Bob? She wanted to know where he was. Did you say? She seemed to know. He was here when I left. Yes, he was helping me with the clay. She followed him down here and she saw something. What? Nothing. There wasn't anything to see, Papa. What? Papa, please don't tell Clara. But he came at me. He's been after me and Jim, after me. Jim, Jim, did you see anything? I think you better ask, Bob. Maddie, get your sweater. We're going into town. Why? Like Jim said, we're going to ask Bob. Now go on. It's all my fault. I should have done what the doctors said. The doctors? They never could find any real reason for her blindness. They begged me to take her down to Topeka to some kind of clinic. But she wouldn't go. And she carried on and she cried and... Well, she didn't have any hope anymore and... So I gave in. Better call the hospital, get hold of Bob. Tell him to meet me outside. Yeah. How's the station wagon? That's fine. Well, that's good. Pickup's a little low on gas. Operator, why don't you get me the general hospital in Sioux Falls, please? Clara, I wouldn't want to hurt her ever. Oh, no. You never wanted to hurt her. Even when you're eight years old. Even up on the ledge. What do you mean? You've lived with this for years. You say it didn't happen. 
You know that it has happened. What are you talking about? I was about? walking through the field. And I saw you. No. You tried to push her over the edge, and you lost no. your balance. But she told you that story. She, she didn't. made she up never a story. Said a thing. She never said anything. She never said anything. But it's time something was said. It's time it came out before you hurt somebody else. I can't carry it anymore by myself. Let them know what goes on in that head of yours. Let them know what you see behind those empty eyes. We're going into town. We're going to talk to Bob. We're... I've got to close the garage. No, it... If you try Miss Braden's room, you might find him there. Thank you. I don't know. Well, why didn't they check the gear shift first? It was all I had. such a good man. A stupid accident and he's dead. I'll need you now, more than ever before. I think Clara's gonna need me too. But you said she wasn't badly hurt. I mean afterwards. When she's walking again? With two good eyes? What do I do then? Where do I go? Maddie, that's... I love you, Bob. Don't throw me away. We'll talk about it later. Not right now. When? Later, I don't know. I gotta get to town. I got all those arrangements to make. When I get back, we'll talk about it. Fixing. Of course it does. Otherwise, Papa would still be here. It was fixed. It wasn't. It slipped. You do believe it slipped, don't you?
من هنا You're wrong. I loved him very much. You weren't there. You can't be sure the gear didn't slip. It was fine when I finished working on it. It could have gone bad. It is possible. Anything's possible. What if I can't prove it? Have you ever been in a spot like that? It is your word against mine. You don't think they'll believe you. And Bob will? Not if he thinks you took the gears. Maddie, I have no reason to hurt your father. If Papa found out about you, you're a criminal. He, he may have even mentioned it to me. to call the sheriff. Now, don't be silly. Why would I do a thing like that? I could have done that the first night. You just don't understand. I like you. I like you very much. Would you get me the sheriff? Papa always worked so hard. I shouldn't have told you. I should have waited till tomorrow at least. Papa, I. Clara, there's something else. Huh? About four months ago, Maddie and I were coming back from town. I know. I've known all along. Never said anything. Sometimes, if you don't put things into words, you can pretend like they never happened. Besides, you never took her back into town after that. You still want to marry me? I've been going to marry you since I was seven years old. I don't know why I've changed now. I never loved you before. Just so you love me now. You sure she didn't want me to call? No, I asked. I told her you were over to High Meadow. And she said when you got back to come on out. All right, let's go. Why did you think it was Mr. Grover, Maddie? Because she must have called him. She was hoping the sheriff would get here before I could talk to you. Don't listen to him. He'll lie. He's a criminal. Mr. Albers never sent him out here. Well, I know that. I've already talked to Mr. Albers. I worked on the station wagon. I checked out the gears. They worked perfectly. What are you talking about? They're broken. They slipped. They didn't slip. They did slip. I don't believe that. 
I can't. I can't believe Maddie would. I can't. I can. That day on the ledge, when she slipped and fell, she was trying to push me off. No, you're lying. You're making up that story. I know you hate me because Papa's always liked me best. But I'm the one that's blind. Daddy, you had their eyes and their hands and their lives. It suited you fine. No. That sweet old man. You killed him? You killed him? Who are you to talk, lover boy? Clara, let me tell you about lover boy. Let me tell you what he did. I know. I've known all along, Maddie. Hysterical blindness. Oh, Maddie. Poor Maddie may have to see again. Right? Are you wanted for something? Something I didn't do. Go on out the back. Eddie? Come on in, Sheriff. She called, said there was someone out here to pick up. There he is. won't set a date for the trial until after the psychiatrists are through testing it. You gonna stay on? Now, Sam always hoped we would. Can you make it alone, just the two of you? We'll manage. The last thing she ever did, the hard hand. Nice guy. He did an awful lot for us. He left before she could finish it. It's a real good likeness. Real good. You never saw him. No. Guess maybe I never did. Richard Kimball still travels in the dark, waiting, hoping for the day when he can prove his innocence. Until then, it must remain night for him. Until then, Richard Kimball must be what he is, a fugitive.